Yellowstone Hotspot. The Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field developed through three cycles spanning two million years that included some of the world's largest known eruptions. The second cycle concluded when the eruption of Mesa Falls Tuff around 1.3 million years ago, forming the 16 kilometer wide Henry, Henry Sport Caldera at the western end of the first caldera. Activity subsequently shifted to the present Yellowstone Plateau and culminated 640,000 years ago with the eruption of the 100 kilometer Lava Creek Tuff and the formation of the present 45 by 85 kilometer caldera. Resurgent doming subsequently occurred at both the northeast and southwest sides of the caldera. No magmatic eruptions have occurred since the late Pleiocene, but large hydrothermal eruptions took place near Yellowstone Lake during the Holocene. Yellowstone is presently the site of the world's largest hydrothermal system, including Earth's largest concentration of geysers. Old Faithful. And this is the area where you would go to watch Old Faithful. It's a geyser cone located in Wyoming in Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Old Faithful is named in 1870 during the Washburn Langford Dine Expedition and was the first geyser in the park to receive the name. The geyser, as well known as nearby Old Faithful N, is part of the Old Faithful Historic District. And let's get a view. And this is what you'll see when you go on the Volcano Observatory. You guys can go on Google Earth and do more exploring around here.
Yellowstone Plateau. The Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field is a geological feature found in the U.S. United States of Wyoming. It is a popular site for tourists. The three super eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and approximately 630,000 years ago, forming the Island Park Caldera, the Henry Sport Caldera, and Yellowstone Calderas, respectively. The plateau developed through three volcanic cycles spanning 2 million years that included some of the world's largest known eruptions. You can see there's a lot of trees down. Okay, and moving on to the next one. Yellowstone Caldera. It's a volcanic caldera and supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park in western United States, sometimes referred to as Yellowstone Supervolcano. The caldera and most of the park are located in the northwest, northwest corner of Wyoming. The major features of the caldera measure about 34 by 45 miles, or 55 by 72 kilometers. And I think we're going to go get a view here. Beautiful. And again, you can go on Google Earth and there's more little spots where you can um, land and look. Let me show you all the little blue dots. There's blue dots over here and here. And there's several over here. Okay, and we're moving on to the next one. Blacktail Butte. This butte is a principal landmark in Jackson Hole. And you can look up more information on it online.
boar's tusk. I'm going to go 3D. Boris Tuss is an isolated remnant of a long extinct volcano associated with Lucite Hills to the east. Heavily eroded, all that remains of the volcano is part of the erosion resistant volcanic neck, which is composed of, unco of the uncommon volcanic rock lamprite. Rock samples from Boris Tuss provided an age of 2.5 million. So. Kind of cool. And let's see if we have a road view or not. And we don't. Okay, and we're moving on to the next one. Lucite Hills. The Lucite Hills consist of 2,000 kilometers area with less than two dozen isolated lava flows, dikes, necks, and cinder cones of unusual potassium-rich comp composition. Their age is about 1.1 million years. The Lucite Hills are on the north flank of the Rock Springs up the 30 miles northeast of Rock Springs. They are a series of mesas and buttes whose tops rising hundreds of feet above the floor of the Red Desert mark a former level of the basin floor. They were named by the 40th Parallel Survey in 1871 for the mineral lucite contained in the rocks. This was the first discovered occurrence of lucite bearing rocks in North America. The hills are an eroded remnant of the late Pliocene to early Pliocene age volcanic field. Today geologists call these rare ultra potassic mafic igneous rocks lamprolites. The name lamprite originates from the Greek word lampro, meaning glistening, a reference to the microcrystals that are characterized this type of volcanic rock. And there's ice caves are over here. And moving on to the next one. Zirkel Mesa. is a volcanic field with cinder cones consists of a group of lamprite flows, dikes, volcanic, volcanic clastics, scoria, and volcanic necks that contain some of the most unusual minerals found on Earth and Moon for that matter. Unfortunately, most of these minerals are microscopic.
and we're moving on to the next one. Emmons Cone. Made up of pumice material, and you can see the link on here for more details. And I do post all of these volcano links on Google Maps, so I do post them. So you can look up this more for yourselves. And we're moving on to the next one. Hatcher Mesa. An eroded, ponded, lamprite lava flow. Absaroka Range. Is the remnant of a large volcanic field that was active for 10 million years during the Middle Eocene, 53 to 43 million years ago. Volcanic activity occurred along two subparallel trends that extend 165 miles in length from Livingston, Montana to Du Bois, Wyoming. The field is 60 miles wide from Buffalo Bill Dam to Lake Butte Overlook in the eastern quarter of Yellowstone National Park. Devil's Tower. It's a Lacolith Butte composed of igneous rock in the Bear Lodge Mountains near Hewlett and Sundance in Cook Crook. County, Northeast Wyoming. The summit is 5,112 feet above sea level. Several believe the molten rock comprising the tower might not have surfaced. Others are convinced the tower is all that remains of once was a large explosive volcano. That is like totally cool looking. And let's get a view, a road view.
There you go. That's huge. And we're moving on to the next one. That was like really cool. Missouri boots. Just like with Devil's Tower, the buttes are composed of igneous intrusive phonolite, which exhibits cumular column, columnar jointing. The rocks of the buttes have been interpreted to be part of a lacolith, a magmatic stock or volcano conduits that became exposed at the surface after overlying rocks eroded away. And that's Missouri Buttes West here. This is Missouri Buttes Lake here. And moving on to the next one. Island Park Caldera. is one of the largest calderas with approximate dimensions of 80 by 65 kilometers. Its ash fall is a source of the Huckleberry Ridge Top that is found from Southern California to Mississippi River near St. Louis. The super eruption of approximately 2,500 kilometers or 600 cubic miles occurred 2.1 million years ago and produced 2,500 times as much ash as the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Island Park Caldera has a young, smaller and younger Henry's Fort Caldera nested inside it. And for that, I've done a picture. So this is Island Park Caldera. It goes through Wyoming. Island Park Caldera. Is one of the largest calderas with approximate dimensions of 80 by 65 kilometers. Its ash fall is a source of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff that is found from Southern California to Mississippi River near St. Louis. 
The super eruption of approximately 2,500 kilometers or 600 cubic miles occurred to Island Park Caldera. So this is Island Park Caldera coming, and it goes into Idaho and then stretches up even into Montana. And then this is through Yellowstone Caldera here. So that's huge. And then this one over here is on a different video.